This is your ultimate stop for everything sports. The Golden State Media Concepts Sports Podcast. Should I say more? From the NFL, MLB, the NBA, to MMA, it's all in here. The Golden State Media Concepts Sports Podcast. Listen now. Sports Podcast. As always, this episode is brought to you by AdamandEve.com. If you go to AdamandEve.com and type in the promo code SPORT, you'll get 50% off just about any item. And again, I'm your host, Jesse Tapia, and for today's show, we're actually going to start off with some baseball. We usually don't talk too much baseball on here since the season uh, World Series ended a couple weeks ago, weeks, uh, yeah, weeks ago. but uh, yeah, we're going to talk some Giancarlo Stan, see where he's going to talk about the teams that are trying to trade for him, then we'll go over the award winners so far in the MLB uh, later on in the show. We'll talk uh, the NBA scores from Monday night, no, Tuesday night, yeah, Tuesday night, and then I'll do some power rankings for the NBA, haven't done those in a while. And then third, for um, next up after that, we'll do we'll talk about uh, Thursday night football between Tennessee and Pittsburgh. And Ty- Tyrod Taylor got benched by the Bills, so that's going to be a fun one to talk about. And then to finish out the show, we'll talk some college basketball, some soccer, and then pretty much anything else that's going on in sports, like we usually do for that last segment. So it's going to be a fun show. Let's just get it started now. So let's uh, start off with the award winners for the MLB so far. So, of course, the AL Rookie of the Year went to Aaron Judge. The guy had a monster season. He had 52 home runs, 114 RBIs, and he hit, uh, had a batting average of 284. And it was pretty cool to see Aaron Judge um, Aaron Judge play so well, even though it was for the Yankees. Uh, but uh, he's from Linden, and that's probably probably about, uh, about maybe a half hour, 45 minutes away from where I'm living right now in Sacramento. So, yeah, it's pretty cool to see a local guy like that. Uh, do so well and it's actually pretty crazy because he could have played a uh, college football I think he got recruited by uh, Stanford and Notre Dame to be a tight end and uh, those teams right there they produce some of the best tight ends so imagine him going to Notre Dame or Stanford instead of coming out to the MLB and then you know we might even be seeing him in the and we could have saw him in the NFL if it was um, if he wanted to be there so yeah it was pretty cool Aaron Judge uh, rookie of the year had a monster season uh, let's see what else about him uh, let's see. The, well, for he's gonna he's gonna win a couple of MVP awards probably um, coming up in his career. Guy was like I said, he was just a monster for the Yankees this season. Playing in that small park is just boom. You're gonna hit home runs constantly. He's able to drive in runs. He did have a strikeout problem. I think he had a little streak where he had 34 straight games with a strikeout, and that's something that like he, he's just a rookie too. So that's something that's just gonna it's gonna get better as his career progresses. He's gonna learn how to. Um, how do you say, uh, wait on the ball and pretty much choose his pitches, like be more selective. But uh, yeah, so I'm not too worried about the whole strikeouts and all that. But the fact that he hit 52 homers, 114 RBIs, I believe he scored 128 runs too. So pretty much just a monster, uh, uh, a monster as far as uh, hitting and scoring goes. And he's not too bad of a right fielder either. I mean, he had a, let's see, I think it was against Houston. He had, he robbed, I can't remember who it was. He robbed someone of a home run. So yeah, Aaron Judge is going to be good for years to come. Cody Bellinger was the NL Rookie of the Year. He hit 39 home runs. He also hit, uh, had a 267 batting average. And that's just a player that the Dodgers aren't going to have to worry about going forward. He, um, they just lost the World Series, obviously. But he did struggle a bit in the World Series. But like I said, he's only a rookie. So it's uh, the MLB is really in a, um, in a time where... You're starting to see uh, rookies when they come out more. They're starting to produce like const like instantly. I mean, yeah, they're starting to produce instantly. So it's a really fun time with the MLB. Also, I saw uh, something about Aaron Judge. He's he's only a rookie, but he's still older than Bryce Harper. And Bryce Harper's been in the uh, league for six years. So I just wanted to put that out there. I thought that was interesting to see. But yeah, right now Aaron Judge, Cody Bellinger. By far the best rookies uh, so far this season. I think uh, Judge was a unanimous selection, and Andrew Benatendi he came in second. But yeah, so Yankees and Dodgers they got some nice prospects coming up, and then like I said, they got they got to build their teams around Judge and Bellinger. And then the AL Manager of the Year went to Paul Molitor. 
from the Minnesota Twins. Last year, the Twins lost to 100 games, and this uh, they made the postseason this season. I think this was the first time a team has ever lost 100 games and then came back the next year and made it to the postseason. And uh, the Twins, they got a pretty good squad. Uh, let's see, who do they have? Who else do they have? Let me see. I got the stats up right here. You got uh, Brian Dozier. He played pretty well so far. He played pretty well this season. And then Miguel Sano, he's one of my favorite players um, in the league. He's really good. He had, uh, let's see, he had around 112 hits so far this season. And Byron Buxton, he's one of the better center fielders in the league right now, especially defensively. So, yeah, Paul Molitor, your AL Manager of the Year. Your NL Manager of the Year was Tony Tori Lovuyo from the Diamondbacks. He had um, he brought the Diamondbacks to the postseason for the first time since 2011. They had uh, 93 wins this season. And I'm sure the Red Sox front office right now is just kicking themselves in the butt because they, they had Luvoyo and they knew what he was. Um, I think there was a time where John Farrell, uh, he missed, a, I think it was like a couple seasons ago, back in 2014, I think. He missed some time and then he got really sick. I can't remember exactly what it was, but Luvoyo came in and he did well uh, managing the Red Sox. And I know that most of the fans wanted him to stay and they wanted actually um, the Red Sox to get rid of Farrell so they could keep uh, Lovuyo and have just, just have him be the manager. But they let him get away and look what he did with the Diamondbacks. He brought him to the postseason, like I said, for the first time since 2011. And they did get swept by the Dodgers in the NLDS. But I mean, that's a big step right there for them to move up. I mean, like I said, since 2011, it's quite the drought right there. But the Diamondbacks are going to be a good team going forward. They got big Paul Goldschmidt playing first base and hitting home runs for them. So, yeah, watch out for the Diamondbacks next year. So, yeah, those are the awards so far. I'm not going to do gold gloves because that's just going to take too long. But uh, I think on Thursday is when they're announcing the AL MVP, NL MVP, the Cy Young Award for the AL and the NL Cy Young Award. So we're going to see how that all plays out. I hope. Uh, I think Miguel Altuve is going to – no, not Miguel. Jose Altuve. I don't know why I botched that one. But, yeah, Altuve is gonna, probably going to win the AL MVP. Not sure who's going to get it in the NL, but we'll see how that all goes. Now let's talk about Giancarlo Stanton. So who's going to get the big guy? Who's going to get him and his contract? Let's see. This season he hit 40. No, let me see real quick. I got it right here. He hit 59 home runs and had 132 RBIs. And let's see. What was his batting average? He hit 281. So all around solid for him. Uh, usually you see these guys hitting a bunch of home runs. Their batting average is kind of low because that's all they do is hit home runs. But no, Stanton is someone who can pretty much get you base hits too. So he's not just a home run hitter. Although that's what he's known for. And right now the teams that I've seen that are currently trying to get him are the Red Sox, the Giants, the Cardinals, the Dodgers, Philly. And I saw that San Diego might be a possibility, but I doubt that. So I'm just going to run through each team and talk about why he'd be a good fit. What he'd, Yeah, pretty much talk about why he'd be good there or why he would even go there. So let's start off with St. Louis. Uh, it was reported, uh, I think, a couple of days ago that he was gonna. He didn't want to go to St. Louis, but really can't believe all these reports right now because it was uh, talked about that he didn't want to go to Boston either. But it turns out that um, that's not completely true. He just prefers to play in California because that's where he's from. But uh, yeah, so let's get into St. Louis first. He'd be a good fit in St. Louis just because. If he's there, they're a winner again. Uh, let me double check their record from last season. But yeah, like if he goes there, um, it's anyone who gets Stan is going to be playing extremely well. That's just a big bat right there. The Cardinals are missing a bat like that. They really haven't. Um, they haven't had like that scary hitter since uh, they lost Pools to the Angels. Yeah, like just they've been needing that one big bat, and I feel that um, if Stan goes there, then he's gonna. He's going to produce big time for them. Like I said, uh, they finished uh, 83 and 79 this season. So not really where you want to be, but it's over 500 for them. Let's see. They finished behind Milwaukee and the Chicago Cubs. So right now the Cubs are going to be at the top of that division going forward for quite a while. So you really need a guy like Stan in order to compete with a team like that. If they were to get Stan, I'm sure they'd be already better than Milwaukee. So yeah, Stan would just be a big help right there. Uh, if he were to go to San Francisco, I'm not too sure if that would be like the best spot. I mean, who doesn't want to play in the Bay Area? That's probably one of the bigger things that he's thinking about too. Because I know he does. He's from the Southern California, I believe it is. So he's probably going to either end up in uh, with L. Or actually, we'll talk. I'll talk a little bit. Let me slow down real quick. But uh, yeah, so the Giants, it's, a, it's more of a pitcher's park right there, I feel. And uh, I feel like 
uh, they had a really bad season. I don't think they're going to be as bad as they were last season, but they had a lot of bullpen issues, and they've had them for the last couple of years. Uh, they didn't have Bumgarner for the entire, like, pretty much the entire year, so he's going to be back. But uh, if he goes to the Giants, of course, they're not going to be as bad as they were last year, but I just feel like there are other teams that he can go to to where he can still produce and play well and become a winner. Uh, the Phillies are a team that's also they've been mentioned, but I don't really think that that's going to be a good fit there. The Phillies are still trying to rebuild. They're bringing up their young guys right now, so I just feel like Stanton going there would pretty much be no different than him leaving the Mar or staying with the Marlins. They're not going to win too many games, but maybe he'll become a beloved uh, player there, of course. But yeah, there's really no reason for him to go there. I feel. San Diego, the only reason he'd go there, I feel, is just if they offered a bunch of prospects for him and he's like, all right, yeah, Southern California, I'm there. And then the Dodgers, uh, that's a team that's, uh, I hear them in Boston right now are the front runners for uh, Stanton, but the only way he'd be able to go to the Dodgers is if he, if he was able to rework his contract. I know that uh, I've seen that the Dodgers are his preferred team that he wants to go to, but like I said, that he'd have to rework his contract, and I'm not too sure if he'd want to. I mean, he's getting paid all kinds of money, so I mean, personally, if I was him, I'm not taking a pay cut. I'm going to get paid because then you see like a team like uh boston we'll talk uh, where they can afford to get him but let's talk more about the dodgers if the dodgers were to get him put them back in the world series once again they'd have no trouble uh, mowing down through the nl i feel they're already one of the they were already the best team in the nl last season and a guy like stan is just going to make you better and a hitter like that any hitter like that that shows up to your team that's just going to make teams fear you so if you were to go to the dodgers you guys got you got guys like uh bellinger and you got Stanton, and then I'm drawing a blank for some reason, but you got Corey Seager too, and then you got Puig, so that'd be a, just a deadly lineup right there, and that'd just be a really fun team to watch, and like I said, put him back in the World Series if Stanton was to make his way back, um, wake his way to uh, LA, but like I said, he's going to have to restructure that contract, and then the last team is Boston, so like I said, it was a, I think it was a report from the Boston Herald that said that he wouldn't accept the trade to the Red Sox or St. Louis. And then I was doing a little bit of digging some research, and then I found another report that said, uh, I think it was from NBC Sports Boston, that said um, that, said that uh, God, I'm drawing a big blank right now, but he, he prefers to play in L.A. because that's where he's from, but he wouldn't rule out Boston. Um, it's just LA is his preferred spot. But if you were to end up like um, end up with a team like Boston, I mean that'd be a perfect fit for him too. Instant, uh, those are AL East champions from last year, and then even if they were to add Stan, boom, they're probably AL, AL, AL East champions again. So a guy like him, they need a guy like that since they lost Ortiz to retirement last year. The Red Sox they had um, some pretty good hitters. Mookie Betts stepped up, and then uh, Hanley Ramirez did his thing a few times, but they didn't have that one guy in the lineup like. Um, they did with Ortiz where you like the pitcher is gonna he's gonna be intimidated if they were to add Stan right there throw him in the fourth spot or even the third spot right there in the lineup Boston is a World Series contender I mean they already can be they're already looking to spend some money in the offseason I saw him Dave Dombrowski said that he's not afraid to be in the luxury tax that they're gonna try and spend big so they'd probably have to give up a guy like probably Jackie Bradley Jr. probably Xander Bogarts maybe those two and then maybe if they didn't want to give up those two, they might have to give up like Mookie Betts or Andrew Benatendi for sure. So uh, Dave Dombrowski pretty much guided the Red Sox farm system, their minor league system. So they'd really have to trade from players um, on their team already. So, I mean, it's going to be interesting to see where he ends up. Right now, I'm going to say he's either going to end up in L.A. or Boston, uh, mainly because those are probably the two teams that, I mean, L.A., it's, Actually, I don't know about LA. It's kind of a pipe dream right now just because of his contract. Like, he would have to restructure it. And like I said, if I'm him, I'm not really sure if I want to restructure my contract with all that money I'm going to be getting. So maybe like Boston and even Boston and San Francisco, I feel like those are probably the top two. LA is going to, I'm going to keep them right there with um, those two teams because you never know what will happen. But yeah, we'll see how it all plays out. If you were to go to Boston, those are instant World Series contenders right there. LA, same thing, probably going to win the World Series if they get Stan. And then San Francisco, no way they can be as bad as they were last season. So if they were to get Stan, they'd be even better. And that, uh, that NL West division would be even funner to watch with uh, the D-backs playing well. Dodgers World Series contenders. The Rockies uh, made it to the wild card game. They lost to the Diamondbacks. So, I mean, add Staten to San Francisco and boom, they're back in the mix. So, we're going to see how it all plays out. It's going to be really fun to see where he ends up. Uh, let's see. If I had to make a pick, I don't want to be a homer right now. Picking Boston. So, you know, I'm going to go I'm gonna go San Francisco. That's going to be my pick. 
but we'll see how it all plays out. He could end up in Boston, but like I said, we'll see how it all is. I probably we'll probably see him get moved within this week or the next week. So uh, stay tuned for that. But uh, that's gonna wrap it up for this first segment. Next up, we're gonna talk some NBA games from Tuesday night, and we're gonna do some power rankings. So stay tuned, and we'll be right back. Hey, are you looking to spice things up in the bedroom? Have you been fantasizing about surprising your lover with an adventurous new toy or adult movie? Well, AdamandEve.com has an offer you're not going to be able to resist. If you go to AdamandEve.com and for a limited time only, you'll get 50% off just about any item. But that's not all they're offering. Oh, no. When you select your one item at 50% off, you'll also receive three free adult DVDs. You know, just in case you need that little inspiration. Plus a free extra gift so sensual, I can't even mention it on this podcast. And to top it all off, they're even willing to throw in free shipping on your entire order. And we all know how we love that free shipping. And no, they're not kidding about any of this. So check out adamandeve.com today for this special offer. You'll get 50% off one item when you type in sport for the offer code upon checkout. Again, when you do that, you'll get three free DVDs, a free extra gift, and that free shipping. Just use the offer code sport. That's S-P-O-R-T at adamandeve.com. Again, that's S-P-O-R-T sport at adamandeve.com. And welcome back to the GSMC Sports Podcast. In that last segment, we talked about uh, we talked some MLB. Actually, I know MLB doesn't get too much love right now since they're in their off season. But with Giancarlo Stan, with everyone wondering where he's gonna go, and with all these awards coming out, and so uh, I think I thought it was time that we talk a little bit of MLB. So, but uh, for this segment, we're gonna talk some NBA. We're going to go over the scores from Tuesday night, and then I'm going to do my power rankings for this week. So let's get started. Toronto went into Houston. Toronto won that one, 129-113. to DeMar DeRozan had a big game. He had 27 points, 6 rebounds, 5 assists. Kyle Lowry had 19 points, 10 rebounds, five re- or 10 assists, 5 rebounds. He shot 4 of 12 for the game, from the game. And Kyle Lowry starting to, this season he showed us that he's going to be that point guard that does everything for the Raptors. Oh, excuse me, but... uh. He hasn't really been scoring like high, like around the 23-point range that he usually is around. But I know he's averaging around 19 or 20 points a game. So, But uh, it's more DeRozan is more taking over as far as the scoring goes. But Lowry, like I said, he's just pretty much doing everything for that team. C.J. Miles had 19 points. He shot 6 of 12 from the field, but he also shot 6 of 9 from 3. So he made uh, 6 threes in that one. Those are only shots he made, actually, like I said. But uh, James Harden, he had 38 points. 11 assists, 6 rebounds. He didn't shoot too well. He went 8 of 25. Trevor Ariza, I was thinking about it yesterday. Or actually, let me give you his stats first. But he had 20 points, 8 rebounds. He shot 6 of 11 from the field, 5 of 8 from 3. But uh, Trevor Ariza is one of those players that were like, uh, how old is this guy? I remember when he was around for the Celtics Lakers finals. I think it was in 2008, maybe in 2000, or I mean 2010. I can't remember it was exactly 2008 too. But uh, yeah, he's just been in the league for a while. And I know it's only been probably about seven years, seven, yeah, about a, um, ten to seven years or seven to ten years. But yeah, this guy's just been in the league for a while. I'm not even sure how old he's. He's got to be at least 30. But uh, he's still producing, playing well, so that's good for him. Eric Gordon had a bad game. He only had 12 points. He shot 3 of 12, 0 of 7 from 3. Uh, the Spurs went into Dallas. They won that one. Uh, let me double check the score. They won that one 97 to 91. Lamarcus Aldridge had 32 points, 5 rebounds, 4 assists. He shot 12 of 21. Patty Mills had 19 points. He shot 7 of 13, 4 of 9 from 3. Manu Ginobili, the ageless wonder, 13 points. He shot 4 of 7. And Dennis Smith Jr. had 27 points, 6 rebounds. He shot 10 of 23, 5 of 11 from the three-point line. And it's good to see that Dennis Smith Jr. is finally getting his shot to go down. I know he struggled um, a lot early on in the season, but with how he's been playing now, it's uh, exciting to see, especially now that uh, the Mavericks see that they can build a team around him. I mean, I know it's still early, but he's going to be the point guard of the future for him. For them, I have no doubts. And Harrison Barnes, he had 16 points, 8 rebounds. He shot 5 of 16. And then for the, last, the third game of the Tuesday night, 
Boston beat Brooklyn 109-102. to 102. Marcus Morris had a big game. He's been pretty solid for the Celtics so far since he came back. He had 21 points, 10 rebounds. He shot 10 of 12, and he took over in the fourth quarter. Brooklyn just could not stop him at all. Kyrie Irving, he had a solid game. 25 points, 5 assists. He shot 8 of 20. Jason Tatum had 21 points, 10 rebounds. He shot 6 of 9 in the game. Tatum's been a rookie who's been really impressive so far this season. He's looking like the second best rookie so far. Of course, the number one rookie being Ben Simmons. Al Horford had another big game. 17 points, 11 rebounds. He shot 8 of 10. And then Rondé Hollis Jefferson for the Nets. He had 16 points, 9 rebounds. Alan Crabb, 15 points. All of his shots uh, came from the three-point line, and he made those. He went 5 of 8. And then Joe Harris, that's a name drop right there. Probably going to have to Google him if you don't um, know who he is. He had 19 points. He shot 7 of 14 from the field and 5 of 11 from three. So, yeah, it was a pretty it was a pretty fun night in the NBA. Toronto's looking like a team that, you know what, I've doubted them a few uh, little bit so far this season, mainly because they didn't make any big moves in the offseason. But they're a team with good players, and they're showing that by being down on Houston. And then let's see the Spurs. They're um, they started off good, and then they started and they went off shaky after that. And then now they're starting to pick it up. I believe they're nine and five right now, and they're playing pretty well without Kawhi Leonard. Once he gets back, obviously they're going to get even better. So it's going to be fun to see how the Spurs um, play once he comes back. And then Boston, that's thirteen. Yeah, that's thirteen wins in a row right there after starting off zero and two. Brooklyn gave them a nice little fight, but uh, they really couldn't. They really couldn't put it together at the end. Like I said, Marcus Morris has been a good player so far for the Celtics. Jason Tatum is... Uh, you can't ask anything more of Jason Tatum right now. I think he's averaging around 14 points, 7 rebounds, I think. And for him to be a rookie and contributing to a team that's trying to play for the... Make it to the finals this season is pretty much all you could ask for. Kyrie Irving, he's not having to do too much, but he's still averaging around 23 points a game. And then Al Horford is pretty much... That's the, that's the, that's the glue of the team right there. If he's not playing well, then... Uh, the Celtics aren't going to play well either. But like I said, he's been lights out so far this season. So watch out for the Celtics. They got the Warriors on Thursday. So that's going to be a, a good test for them right there to see where they're at. But uh, now let's get into the, some power rankings. So at number one, I have the Boston Celtics. Right now, like I said, they're 13-2 and two on a 13-game 13, 13 win streak. Jason Tain has been playing well. Jalen Brown's been playing well. Pretty much the whole team has been playing well. Even the rookies that they have. I think it was against uh, I think it was against Charlotte, I think, or Toronto. I can't remember exactly, but they played six guys who weren't even in the league last year. I think it was on Sunday. Whoever they, I think it was the Raptors that they played on Sunday. They played six guys who weren't in the league last year and they played them all like seven, at least seven minutes. So uh, Brad Stevens has guys that you know who haven't really gotten a shot or who are rookies and they're contributing instantly. That's all you can really ask for from them. At uh, number two, I got the Golden State Warriors. They're eleven and three right now. Uh, if they were probably twelve and two, I'd have them at number one. But since the Boston has the best record in the NBA and the best defense in the NBA, I'm gonna have them at number one. But like I said, Golden State at number two, eleven and three. Kevin Durant is doing his thing. There's pretty much nothing. There's nothing new to say about the Warriors. They're probably still the best team in the NBA. But um, like, what do like? What do you want me to say about the Warriors? Like I said, like you're not gonna beat them. They're probably gonna, they're gonna end up in the finals. Um, coming out of the West, so there's really not too much to say about them. Steph, um, Steve Kerr is doing well to manage all these players' minutes. If, uh, like I said, uh, I think it was the other day, Steph Curry had a little uh, quad injury or something, probably just so sore, and Steve Kerr just sat him and didn't let him play. So, I mean, you really don't got to worry about the Warriors for the regular season. I don't even think they're taking it too seriously. They're just re getting ready for the um, for once the playoffs start. So, we'll see how they do once that all comes. But like I said, I expect them to end up in the finals and probably win it again. Probably do the same thing next year, but... Houston, they're 11-4 right now. They've been playing well without Chris Paul. James Harden, like I said, he's been doing well so far this season. He's doing well in that point guard position. He did well last year playing point guard. So, I mean, once the once Chris Paul comes back, they're going get to get even better. Eric, Bla or Eric Gordon started to come back down to earth. I think he was averaging 25 points a game early on in the season, but I can't remember exactly what he's averaging now. At number four, I got the Detroit Pistons. This is probably the most surprising team of the league so far this season. Right now they're ten and three. Reggie Jackson's playing well. Andre Drummond's hitting his free throws, getting rebounds and scoring points. Avery Bradley, that's a big pickup for them. Uh, he think he's averaging around nineteen points a game, probably around eight rebounds like he usually does, and that's just a defensive stopper right there. Uh, no matter what. So yeah, Tobias Harris has also been a player that's been playing well. So right now Detroit's been 
one of the better teams in the East, probably the second best team in the East. And I'm not too sure if they're going to be able to sustain the success that they've had so far this season. Maybe they will, maybe they won't. They keep playing good defense, and Van Gundy has them just pretty much uh, has a set plan for them, and they fall through with that plan. Then you know what? Detroit can. They can stay up there, but we'll see how how it goes for them the rest of the season. At number five, I have the Spurs. Just got done talking about them. They're 9-5 and five without Kawhi Leonard. And no, they're not better without Kawhi Leonard at all. I'm sure that really doesn't need to be said, but I'm sure there's people out there who may be thinking it, entertaining that idea. No, LaMarcus Aldridge, remember he wanted to be traded last year. But uh, he ended up not getting traded, and now he's one of the Spurs' best players on the team right now. So, yeah, right now the Spurs are 9-5. and five. They're currently the three seed in the West. But like I said, we're going to see how much better they get once Kawhi comes back. At number six, I have the Washington Wizards. They're currently eight and five, number three in the East. Uh, John Wall's been having, he hasn't had like the a great season so far. He's had a good season, so we're going to see if he can pick it up. Bradley Bill's been playing really well, and Otto Porter's been having a really good season too. So yeah, I got Washington at number six. Number seven, I have Toronto. They're eight and five, number four in the East. DeMar DeRozan is doing his thing. He's averaging around 26 points a game. Kyle Lowry's pretty much doing everything for that team, scoring, rebounding, and giving assists. So, yeah, they've been playing really well. Uh, at number number eight, I got Minnesota. They're currently 8-5. and five. Minnesota's a team that kind of scares me right now, not in a good way, because uh, Jimmy Butler doesn't have a good game, then they're not going to win. And I think it was... Uh, yeah, I saw a stat I might have mentioned on the last podcast, but uh, when he has more than five assists, they're undefeated. It's like 5-0, and I think, or 4-0. I can't remember exactly, but uh, they're way too dependent on Jimmy Butler, and I feel like they, Carl Anthony Towns and Andrew Wiggins need a... I know, I know Jimmy Butler is probably the best player on that team. Uh, you could argue that Towns might be, but uh, those two guys right there, Wiggins and Towns, just really need to take over and take the burden off of Jimmy Butler's shoulders. And number nine, I have the Orlando Magic. They're currently 8-6, and six, number five in the East. They're a fun young team to watch. I really like Aaron Gordon. Evan Fournier has been playing well. They just got Alfred Payton back. And then uh, Vucevic, the center for that team, he's been playing well too. So we'll see how they end, um, end up the rest of the season. They're probably going to end up in the 6th through 8th seed range in the East. So it's gonna be they're going to be a fun team to watch. The Pelicans, I got them at number 10. They're currently 8-6 and six at number 5. I'm really get, glad to see that they're winning ball games. The last season, it, look, it looked like the... Anthony Davis and DeMarcus Cousins pairing wasn't going to work out, but looks like so far this season, just with time, they've gotten better. And once Rondo comes back to the starting lineup, if he does, they're going to get even better too since he makes everyone around him better, and he's good at uh, running offenses. So we'll see how the Pelicans go. Then at number 11, I have the Denver Nuggets. That's another fun team to watch for me. Nikolai Jokic is one of the best centers in the league. He's a top five center. I'm just going to go out and say that right now. Paul Millsap's play been playing well. Jamal Murray's been playing well. Gary Harris has started off kind of slow, but I think he's going to pick it up. So we'll see how Denver goes the rest of the season. Right now, they're 8-6, and six, um, and they're the sixth seed in the West. At number 12, I have the Memphis Grizzlies. They're currently 7-6, seven and six, number 7 seed in the West. And there's really not too much to say about the Grizzlies. They're pretty much the same team that they've been the last couple of years. I mean, players come and go for them, but nothing really changes. They play with their head down. They play hard. Tyreek Evans is going to be a good candidate for sixth man of the year. He's coming off the bench, scoring around 20 points a game, doing well. So we're going to see how Memphis does the rest of the season. The rest of the season. I'm sure that they'll make playoffs, but... Like I said, there might be a team that might surprise some people going forward. At number 13, I have Milwaukee. They're currently 7-6. and six. Giannis Antetokounmpo, he's my MVP, my favorite for MVP this season. They just got Eric Bledsoe added to the team. He's starting. He's playing all right. He's getting used to things with them. Chris Middleton's been having a good year. And Malcolm Brogdon moved to the bench. He's trying to get used to that role, but uh, I think he'll pick it up once he like once the season goes on. At number 14, I didn't think I'd have the, this team here up here so early, but here they are. I got the New York Knicks. They're currently 7-6. and six. They're the number 6 team in the East. And Kristaps uh, Porzingis, that's the franchise right there. He's got everyone playing well. He's playing well. Tim Hardaway showing that he's worth the money. And that rookie, that rookie point guard they have, I think his last name is pr pr pronounced Nitikin. I don't even know how to pronounce his last name. I think his first name is Frank. So I'm going to call him Frank. Frank's playing well. Uh, he's not starting or anything like that, but he's doing well to produce coming off the bench. And uh, yeah, the Knicks have just been a fun team to watch. At number 15, I have the Philadelphia 76ers. They're the seventh seed in the East right now. They're 7-6. and six. Ben Simmons is going to be Rookie of the Year. And Joel Embiid is looking like one of the better centers in the league right now, too. I'd consider him top five so far this season. So 
We'll see how it all plays out for them. I know they're still waiting on Mark Helfold's, um shoulder to get healed up. So once he comes back and that's all at 100%, we'll see how he plays finally. I'm not going to judge those first few games that he was playing because, of course, his shoulder was messed up. So we'll see how he plays once he comes back. At number 16, I got the Portland Trailblazers. They're currently 7-6. and six. They're the 8th seed in the West right now. And uh, Portland's just a weird team to me because... Um, I mean, they got Damian Lillard, they got C.J. McCollum, but they play like a team, like a, I don't know, they don't really, they don't really excite. I mean, they make it to the first round, they get knocked out, so we'll see how it goes for them. At number 17, I got the Cleveland Cavaliers, they're 7-7, seven seven. looks like they're starting to pick things up. They got all high and mighty beating the Knicks, but uh, let's see how they do against the better teams right now. But like I said, they're 7-7, seven and seven, currently the ninth best, ninth, they're ninth right now, right behind Milwaukee with the 8th seed, and then at... Number 18, I have the Miami Heat. They're currently 6-7. and seven. They're probably not going to make playoffs this year, but they do have a chance. They'll be battling for the 8th seed, so we'll see how it goes for them. Number 19, I got the Oklahoma City Thunder. That experiment so far hasn't worked. They're 6-7. and seven. Uh, They take a lot of bad shots. They play defense pretty well, but when you're taking bad shots, you're not going to score too many points, obviously. At number 20, I got the Indiana Pacers. Right now, they're 6-8. and eight. They've been playing all right so far. Oh, they started off really well, but... Uh, these last few games are starting to slow down a lot. At number 21, I got the Utah Jazz. They're 6-8. and eight. Their offense is uh, not that good, honestly. Donovan Mitchell's starting to play well, the rookie that they drafted. So that's a bright spot for them. At number 22, I have the Los Angeles Lakers. Uh, Brandon Eager's been playing well so far for them. They're currently 6-8. and eight. And uh, Lonzo Ball really hasn't. He hasn't impressed so far this season. I'm just going to say it straight up. Kyle Kuzma right now is the best rookie on that team. Julius Randle, he's coming off the bench. He's probably going to be gone after this season. So we'll see how the Lakers play for the rest of the season. Number 23, I got the Clippers. They started off hot. They're cooling down. At number 24, I got the Charlotte Hornets. They've been they've been so-so. They've been, ah, they're, yeah, they're like a mediocre team right now. Kemba Walker's been playing well. So is Dwight Howard. But they struggled to get wins. I think they're 5-8 and eight right now. Let me double-check that. They're 5-7. and seven. Number 25, I got the Brooklyn Nets. They've they're not playing they're five and nine. They're not a good team, but they're playing better than what we thought they would or how we thought they would, I guess. So number twenty six, I got the Phoenix Suns. They're five and ten. Devin Booker's been playing well. Josh Jackson's trying to get used to the NBA, it looks like. So we'll see how they go for the rest of the season. At number twenty seven, I got the Sacramento Kings. Um Yeah, I got the Sacramento Kings at number twenty seven. Right now, this is pretty much like a de- developmental season for them. Don't expect too much. Don't expect too many wins. 28, I got the Chicago Bulls. They're 2-9. and nine. They're still waiting on Zach Levine, so we're going to see how it all plays out for them. 29, I got the Dallas. I got the Dallas Mavericks. They're 2-13, and 13, currently the worst team in the West, but Dennis Smith Jr. is looking like a bright spot for them. And then to round out my rankings, I got Atlanta Hawks. They are 2-12, and 12, the worst team in the NBA, and they're just barely rebuilding, so we'll see how it all plays out for them. That's going to round out that second segment. Those are my player rank or my power rankings. You can agree with them. You can disagree with them. Let me know if you disagree. Let me know if you agree. But uh, next up, we're going to talk Tyrod Taylor, the Buffalo Bills, and we're going to talk Thursday Night Football. We're going to preview that. So stay tuned, and we'll be right back. Are you looking for the very best NFL and college football podcast? Then check out the GSMC Football Podcast. Get the latest football news both on and off the field. From the NFL draft to trades to the rumor mill to the NFL combines. They got you covered. That's gsmcpodcast.com backslash football dash podcast. Get updates on college rivalries, game day insights, and much, much more. It's football talk the way you want it. This show eats, sleeps, and breathes football. Don't forget to like them on Facebook and follow them on Twitter. Visit gsmcpodcast.com for more info. MC Sports Podcast. In that last segment, I talked about Tuesday night's NBA games, gave scores and stats for that those ones, and then I gave my player or my power rankings. I don't know why I keep saying player, but yeah, I gave my power rankings. Maybe I do should do some power, um, player rankings. Maybe I'll do that for the next show. But uh, yeah, I gave my power rankings. Uh, 
like I said, power rankings are fun to do because someone's always going to have something to say about them. But, uh, yeah, that's how that went. And then for this next segment, we're going to talk Tyrod Taylor and the Bills. <laughs> that's going to be a fun one right there. And then we're going to preview the Thursday night game between the Titans and Steelers. So let's get it started. Let's see, which should I start off with first? Do I want to start off with the Steelers and Titans? Yeah, let's do that, and then we'll get into the Bills, go on a nice little rant about them. But, uh, yeah, so let's talk about the Titans and Steelers game on Thursday. Right now, the Titans are 6-3, and three, Steelers are 7-2. and two. Let's look at the standings. Pittsburgh's currently uh, three games up on Baltimore. They're the number one team in the AFC right now, statistically speaking. I mean, you could always argue that the Patriots might be better, but I'm going to go with Pittsburgh as the best team in the AFC right now. Tennessee, 6-3. and three. They're tied with Jacksonville, who's also 6-3. and three. But uh, I believe uh, Tennessee has the tiebreaker over them. And I think that one of those two teams is going to end up in the wild card and win the division. So, or, or win the, the division. So we'll see how that all plays out. But uh, Thursday night's going to be an interesting game. It's in Pittsburgh. It's prime time. So you know the fans are going to be out there. They're going to be going crazy. And uh, it's going to be tough for Marcus Mariota. I don't like this game for Tennessee at all. I think Pittsburgh might blow them out. Uh, I think Antonio Brown's going to have a big game. He didn't play too well in the last one against Indianapolis. He only had three catches for 45 yards, I believe it was. So expect him to have a big game. Juju Smith-Schuster's breaking out. Le'Veon Bell's always going to get his. And that Steelers defense is looking like one of the best in the league right now. Their secondary is finally looking good. So uh, I'm not high on Tennessee in this game at all. I'm kind of scared for Marcus Mariota. I got him on my fantasy team. I'm benching him. I'm actually starting Jay Cutler against Tampa Bay. But we'll save all that for the Thursday's fantasy football podcast. Check that one out too. And... Uh, yeah, i just not thinking this is going to be a good game for Marcus Mariota. The road teams, I think the last four games for road teams. Let me see. Let me double check it. But I'm pretty sure the last four games, road teams have gone 0-4. Let's see. Actually, no, 1-3. Uh, and three. The Seahawks beat the Cardinals last week. But, uh, yeah, like I said, I don't think De- uh, DeMarco Mar- Murray is going to score as many touchdowns as he had on, on Sunday. He scored three against the Bengals. I don't think he's going to be able to do much against the Steelers' defense. Neither will Derrick Henry. Uh, like I said, the secondary is looking good for the Steelers, so I'm not really thinking that Tennessee's receivers are going to do too well. Delaney Walker might have a good game, but it's just not looking good for Tennessee at all right here on Thursday. Let's see, who do the Jacksonville Jaguars got? Let's just see. They got the Browns. So, yeah, if Tennessee loses and Jacksonville wins, Tennessee is going to move to that wild card spot, and Jacksonville is going to be the head of that division. So, Tennessee really needs to start. They really need the, They don't need this game because, like I said, they'll still be in a playoff position, but... We'll see how it all plays out. Uh, I'm going to pick the Steelers for this one. I'm going to call it. I'm going to say it's going to be a blow. I'm just going to call that right now. I'm going to be bold. And honestly, if you think about it, it might not be that bold of a statement. Road teams just simply don't play well on Thursday nights. Um, let's see. The Steelers are coming back from Indianapolis. So they might. I mean, they're coming off of a road game too. But I don't know. I really like the Steelers in this one. It's not it's not going to be a fun game to watch for your Tennessee fans, I don't think. I know I'm being really negative about them right now, but Pittsburgh is the best team in the AFC. They're probably going to continue to be after this week. They'll end up 8-2. and two. Tennessee's going to end up 6-4. and four. Let's see who does Tennessee got in, um, next week. I think they got... The Tennessee has the Colts next week, so they'll be able to pick up a win right there. Most likely, but uh, yeah, so we'll probably end up seven and four after next week. But yeah, I expect Pittsburgh to blow them out on Thursday night. Hopefully, Antonio Brown has a big game. Juju Smith Schuster should have a big game, and Le'Veon Bell should probably go for a couple of touchdowns too. So we'll see how it all plays out. But once again, I got Pittsburgh in that one by in a blowout. And now let's talk about them Buffalo Bills. No one circles the wagons like the Buffalo Bills. So they basically took themselves out of the running for a playoff spot this season. They're 5-4, and four, and they got blown out by uh, New Orleans on Sunday. I think it was 47-10. to 10. So what do they do? Yeah, let's make some changes on defense. Some teams scored 47 points on us, but uh, nope. We're going to drop our quarterback just because he had one bad game. I don't get it at all. Why? I don't understand why Buffalo did this. It makes no sense to me whatsoever. Tyrod Taylor has been playing fine this season. He he doesn't turn the ball over. I mean, yeah, he had a bad game against the Saints defense, but it's one bad game. Okay, you're still 5-4. and four. Let me see. They should still be... Uh, yeah, they're the sixth seed right now on the wild card. Like I said, they're 5-4. and four. But no, let's take away our starting quarterback and pretty much kill our season because that's exactly what they're doing. Buffalo Bills fans, your season's done. I'm calling it right now unless Nathan Peterman, Petterman, whatever you want to call him, unless that guy is the... 
a decent quarterback, or at least, no, he's got to be a good quarterback for this team to make playoffs. If he's not that, then they're done. I don't understand. But you know what this shows me? It shows me that Buffalo never believed in Tyrod Taylor, and they've been waiting for they've been waiting all season for one moment to get him out of the um out of the starting QB position, and that's exactly what they did. They had this bad game against New Orleans, like I said, forty seven to ten at Buffalo. They got blown out, and what do they do? They take away Tyrod Taylor. I just don't get it. I hope he leaves after the season, goes to a team that appreciates him because Buffalo. I don't get it, dude. Why do they constantly get in their own way? It makes no sense to me. Uh, why they do this, but I don't get it, dude. Like I said, they're in a. They have the. I've said it multiple times. They uh, currently have the longest playoff drought in the NFL. I think the last time they made the playoffs was uh, uh, 2001. I think I'm gonna hit Buffalo Bear, uh, Buffalo Bills fans with this. Yeah, it was a uh, Music City Miracle. I think that was the last time they were in the playoffs. Remember that? I'm just very frustrated now. I'm sorry for that, but uh, um, I just don't get it. Why are you benching Tyrod Taylor? It makes no sense. He's playing well. He doesn't turn the ball over. He doesn't throw for too many yards. I think he averages probably around 240 yards a game, but it just makes no sense to me. I don't know, dude. Like I said, Buffalo, there's no doubt in my mind that they were waiting for... They were... um. They were waiting. They were just waiting for something bad to happen so they could take him out. So, Buffalo, if you ever want to wonder why you're not making the playoffs, why you consistently um, continue to miss out, and why you're constantly laughed at, it's because of decisions like this. Go look at Twitter right now. Go read any NFL writers' tweets or articles, and they're going to tell you the same thing I'm telling you. It makes no sense why you take him out. Um, uh, Sean McDermott, I believe that's his name, uh, the Buffalo Bills co- coach, He's he says he's impressed with Peterman's maturity okay cool is that why you're starting him because of his maturity it just it makes no sense like I don't I don't get the Buffalo Bills why are you doing this you were five and two now you're five and four and now you're just gonna kill off your season like this I'm sure most Buffalo Bill fans don't uh, agree with this and uh, it's just I don't get it this is why Tom Brady constantly wins the AFC East and the Patriots constantly dominate because the Bills are out here making dumb decisions the Miami Dolphins can't get out of their own way sometimes and the New York Jets I don't even know what the Jets the Jets have just been the Jets have just been the Jets the last 15 20 years I don't get it the Jets just don't do well they don't win the division if they're going to make the playoffs ever it's only because of the wild card but they only do that once in every blue moon so it's just the AFC the incompetence in the AFC besides the Patriots is what keeps Bill Belichick and Tom Brady at the top. This is why Tom Brady is going to be playing till he's 45 because he doesn't have to worry about other teams in that division. The Bills are constantly going to shoot themselves in the foot, constantly going to make a bad decision when they don't even need to. The Dolphins constantly going to constantly going to hype up their team, going to look like they're doing something, and then boom, once it matters, they fall down. If you don't believe me, just check that primetime record over the last 10 games. And then, like I said, the Jets, just the they're just uh I don't even know what to just they're just the, they're just the team in the AFC East that's it they're just another team out there so congrats to Tom Brady you won the division again uh, I'm gonna give him a congrats for next year he's probably gonna win it again next year too so like I said the AFC East full of incompetence uh, except for one team and that one team that's had a plan that's executed that plan look it they've won the division of, um, so many times the only time that they didn't was in 2008 and that's when Brady tore his ACL so yeah shout out to the AFC East for giving up the division again so there's that tell that's my rant right there very frustrating to see mainly because the Bills they have potential but they don't care they're gonna do what they want and they're pretty much like I said they're just gonna do what they want they don't I don't understand this move at all. I'm still baffled right now. Why are you taking out Ty- Tyrod Taylor? You're five and four. You're not a bad team. The Saints are seven and two right now. They're one of the best teams in the NFL. Yeah, you got blown out, but yeah, you got blown out. Your defense gave up 47 points. So yeah, let's take away our quarterback. He's the one who gave up all those points. No, he didn't. But that offensive line is garbage too. What do you expect uh, Nathan Peterman to do when the quarterback got sacked seven times versus uh, the Jets? Let me see how many times he got sacked versus New Orleans. This is going to be a fun stat. Hopefully it's high just so they can prove my point. Let me see. I'm pulling it up right now. Bear with me. Bear with me. Here we go. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. All right. Got it up. And let's see. They got sacked. Tyrod Taylor got sacked actually twice. So not that bad, but still not good that's nine sacks in two games so i don't know man i mean there's a reason why i'm sitting here talking about them and they're out there making these moves maybe they know something i don't probably not i'm gonna go with the last whatever 15 20 years of their playoff drought i'm gonna base mine off of that 
But uh, yeah, like I said, AFC East, just full of incompetence. But that's all I got to say about that. That was a fun little rant right there. I enjoyed it. Next up, we're going to talk some college basketball. Grayson Allen dropped uh, 35 points. That's the player everyone loves to hate. Uh, Kentucky versus Kansas. That was a really good game, too. We're going to talk some soccer, talk about the World Cup, talk about uh, teams who are playing well. And I think that they're also trying to, the U.S. is trying to come up with a little NIT type of tournament since they missed out. So we'll talk about that. But uh, yeah, stay tuned for that last segment. We'll be right back. Check out the show that's built on the MMA. From the UFC to extreme cage fighting, they got the fights covered. Check out the GSMC MMA podcast. Get the latest news on past or upcoming fights. Join us as we talk to and about some of the biggest names in the MMA, past, present, and future. When it's the fight game, there's just one show to check out. GSMCpodcast.com backslash MMA dash podcast. Don't forget to like them on Facebook and follow them on Twitter. Visit G. SMCpodcast.com for more info. Thursday night football game between Tennessee and Pittsburgh. I picked Pittsburgh. I expect them to win in a blowout. And then I went on a nice rant on the Buffalo Bills. Talked about them benching Tyrod Taylor. Even got to um, take some shots at the Miami Dolphins and talked about the Jets. And pretty much talked about why the AFC East is, AFC East incompetence is why the Patriots continue to win their division year after year. But who knows? Maybe one day they'll figure it out. But uh, for this segment, we're going to talk some college basketball. We're going to talk some soccer. And... Pretty much, we'll pretty. We'll, I'll talk about the game, the NBA games going on tonight. So, let's get it started with college basketball. First game I'm gonna talk about: number one Duke faced off with number two Michigan State. Duke won this one, 88-81. Uh, before I even get into it, Marvin Bagley, uh, one of the Duke's freshmen, expected to be a top five pick in the NBA draft. He came out of the game after ten minutes. He got hit in the eye by one of his teammates, and he missed pretty much the entire. Yeah, he missed the entire game after that. So. Hopefully his eye is not going to be an issue going forward, and hopefully they get that fixed up because you never eye injuries are just the worst. Grayson Allen, everyone's favorite player to hate. I know I'm not too fond of him. I'm really not too fond of Duke. Never have been. Uh, it's more of a. It's been a type that little not being fond of them has pretty much been passed down. But uh, yeah, Grayson Allen, you can't say anything bad about him right now in this game. He had 37 points. He shot 11 and 20 from the uh, for the game. 7 11 from three. And pretty much you can hate him all you want, but he's going to produce. I mean, there's always conversations of how he's going to play in the NBA. His defense is something that really won't allow him to play well. But like I said, I mean, we all hate on the kid. We don't like him because he trips players, but we'll see how it all plays out for him. But like I said, 37 points, he did his job. And I know there was people who were frustrated at that. Uh, Miles Bridges, he had... 19 points in that game shot 7 of 15 5 of 10 from 3 had 5 rebounds 4 assists he played 37 minutes so pretty much the entire game except for 3 and it was a, it was a really fun game to watch Duke pretty much was in the lead for most of the game but uh, Michigan State did well to uh, bring it back a little bit closer made that score a little bit nicer but uh, yeah like I said Duke won and they're looking good right now and let's see Kentucky versus Kansas I was watching this game. I was having a good time watching it, but man, I just it was showing me how much I appreciate the NBA over college basketball. College basketball is entertaining, but they make too many mistakes, and I understand why. But yeah, Kansas won that one, sixty-five to sixty-one. Right now, Kansas, the number four ranked team in the country. Kentucky's ranked number seven. Kentucky's always a weird team because they always have this hype. And uh, I know it comes from when they used to have guys like Anthony Davis, and they used to recruit uh, recruit, uh, recruit all the top players, but. Kentucky is a team where that's all they are pretty much hype. I mean, they're going to be a good team. They're going to make it to the NCAA tournament, but they're just too overhyped. But yeah, like I said, Kansas scored 65, Kentucky has 61, and Kansas came away with that one. Now let's talk some soccer. We're starting to round out the World Cup teams. Let me see if I got a list right here. I should. But uh, 
So yeah, let me see. Uh, let's see. I got yeah. Russia's obviously in it. Then Brazil, Iran, Japan, Mexico, Belgium, South Korea, Germany, England, Spain, Nigeria, Costa Rica, Poland, Egypt, Iceland, Serbia, France, Portugal, Argentina, Colombia, Uruguay, Panama, Senegal, Morocco, Tunisia. Uh, Switzerland, Croatia, and Sweden, and Denmark are in it. Denmark just punched their ticket into the World Cup uh, against Northern the Republic of Ireland. I think that was on Tuesday. Uh, Christian Eriksen had a hat trick in that one. So we're going to see how the World Cup's going to... It's really exciting. It's probably the best tournament in all of sports. Most exciting one, I feel. Uh, Brazil's going to have a really good chance of winning. They got players like Neymar, Gabriel Jesus, Philip Coutinho, Firmino. Uh, let's see, who else do they got on that squad? They got tons of players. They got William. Mexico is going to be an interesting team to watch. Herving Lozano's been playing really well so far this season for them. Or not this season. I'm getting too mixed up. They're talking about the NFL and NBA. But yeah, he's been playing well in the Dutch league for, um, what is he at? PSV. Yeah, PSV. I think he's leading the league in goals right now. And uh, he's going to be a player to watch for them. Belgium. Belgium's got guys like Eden Hazard and Romelu Lukaku. But I feel like they just can't step up. They got all kinds of quality on that team. But once it comes to the big time, they just they fall apart. Uh, Spain. A few years ago, yeah, they would have been a favorite. But we all saw. Actually, no, not a few years ago. The last World Cup, they just pretty much folded into the armadillo position, the little fetal position, and just went down after um, Netherlands just pretty much beat them up. Chile beat them too, and then I think they beat uh, uh, Australia. That's another team that punched their ticket into the World Cup today, I believe it was, or Tuesday, I can't remember exactly, but uh, yeah, Spain, we're going to see how they do. Costa Rica is going to be an interesting team to watch. They went to the quarterfinals in the last World Cup. Uh, Iceland, they played well in the Euro, the last Euro tournament, and we're going to see how they are in the World Cup. France is always a team. They have quality. They got ben, um, they got players like Mbappe, Lacazette, but we're going to see how they do in the World Cup. Something There's always some type of uh, problem with France once the World Cup comes up, so we'll see how they do. Portugal, we're going to see if, uh, how far Ronaldo could take them. Argentina, they got Messi, they got Dybala, they got Higuain, they got Aguero, but for some reason, they've been playing terrible so far. Uh, they played really bad in the World Cup qualifying for their um, group. I think they barely made it. They finished uh, fifth, I think it was, and that's like the last spot you could take. So we're going to see if they're able to fix it up. They need to start playing Messi and Dybala together, but for some reason, the coach doesn't want to do that. Uruguay is always a fun team to watch because of Suarez, but he's been having a, he's been playing um, terrible so far in La Liga. He's, I think, only has like one goal, so... We're gonna see how it all goes, but uh, yeah, let me. I mentioned a little in, little type of NIT tournament. If for those that know what the NIT is, that's pretty much uh, a tournament for the college basketball teams that don't make make uh, the uh, real tournament. And there's been talks from the U.S. again. They're just talks, maybe rumors. I'm not sure, but since the U.S. soccer men's team didn't make the make the World Cup, now they're talking about. Doing a little type of NIT tournament for the teams that didn't make the World Cup either. You'd see teams like Chile, Netherlands in there, Ghana probably. And this is kind of sad. Okay, you didn't make the World Cup. Don't try and make up some some fake tournament. This is a money grab right here. Everything in soccer too is just all money grab. Anything they do, any fake tournament they make up now is all just for money. This is exactly what it would be for the U.S. There's literally no reason for them to host a tournament or even create a tournament like this. You didn't make the World Cup. Deal with it, okay? Don't make up a tournament to make yourselves feel better about um, missing the World Cup. Same with Chile. Same with Netherlands. Um, it's your fault that you didn't make it. So there's really no point in creating some little fake tournament to where um, to make yourselves feel better about not making the World Cup. But yeah, that's all I got to say about that right now. Let's get into the games for the NBA games for Wednesday. We got a good slate of games. It's going to be fun to watch. Let me pull them up right here. Uh, let me see. First up, we got Jazz versus the Knicks. I think the Knicks are going to pull that one out. They're favored in that one, uh, as they should be. They're playing really well. Porzingis has got them playing well. And the Jazz just really have no offense besides Donovan Mitchell. And then you got the Wizards and Heat. Washington's probably going to win that one. It's in Miami, though, so you know what? Miami has a chance of winning that one, too. I'm going to go Washington in that one. And then the Kings at the Hawks. This is the battle of some of the worst teams in the league right here. We're going to see if De'Aaron Fox can play well. I think in his last game, he only shot 3 of 10. So he really needs to pick up his game or at least show um, progression as a rookie. I'm going to pick the Kings in that one. And then on ESPN, the Cavs are heading to Charlotte to face off with the Hornets. I got the Cavs in that one. They're starting to pick up their play a lot more. LeBron James is starting to take over. And I think he said uh, 
he hasn't had a score um, like IT, so they're waiting for him. Uh, it hasn't been that long since Kyrie Irving was there, LeBron. I know that uh, LeBron's not trying to give Kyrie any love since he left, but you know what? Yeah, the Cavs need Kyrie, obviously. I know it's said, you know what, uh, Kyrie needs the Cavs. No, it's the farthest thing from the truth. Go look at the Celtics record. Go look at the Cavs record. But uh, I'm going to pick the Cavs in this one, and we'll see how well they play once they get Isaiah Thomas back. But once he comes back, the defense is going to get even worse. Um, also, I mean, they have one of the worst defenses um, defenses in the league right now. And then, yeah, like I said, once Isaiah Thomas gets back, I mean, I'm not sure if they expect that to get any better. Yeah, he's going to score points if his hip holds up. But like I said, he's just a liability on the defensive end. The Indiana Pacers are heading into Memphis. I'm going to pick the Pacers in this one. Right now, Memphis is favored. And they're currently the better team. But I think that the Pacers are going to be able to pull it out. Then you got the Pistons heading into Milwaukee. That's going to be a fun one to watch. I'm going to pick Detroit in that one. I really like the way they play defense on that team. I think Avery Bradley's going to have a big game. Andrew uh, Andre Drummond, him and uh, Antetokounmpo fighting for rebounds is going to be fun to see. Andre German, I'm, uh, it's kind of good to see that he's finally hitting his free throws. Let me check the stats for these teams. Let's see the leaders. So right now, Tobias Harris is leading Detroit in scoring. He's averaging 20 points a game. Honestly, the Kumpo is averaging 31, 58%. He's shooting 58% from the field. I know he doesn't shoot too many threes, but that's still really good. Andre Drummond's averaging 15, almost 16 rebounds a game. And Ante the Kumpo is averaging 10. And then Reggie Jackson, he's averaging six assists a game. Averaging six assists a game, excuse me. And... Um, Ante the Kumpo is averaging 4.8. Yeah, Ante the Kumpo. I think he leads um, in every category for the Bucks. The top five, which is uh, points, assists, rebounds, steals, um, except for blocks. He doesn't um, lead in blocks. I think that's still John Henson. So it's going to be fun to see how that game plays out. But like I said, I got the Pistons in that one. Then the Spurs. They're heading into Minnesota. They're going to face off with the Timberwolves right now. Minnesota's eight and five. San Antonio's nine and five. I got the Spurs in this one. I trust the Spurs more than I trust the Timberwolves, mainly because they got Greg Popovich, obviously. And he's always going to find out a way to limit their best, um, the opposing team's best players. So uh, we'll see if Jimmy Butler has a good game. But like I said, we'll see how it all plays out. Uh, LaMarcus Aldridge is leading the Spurs in points with 22. Carl Anthony Towns is leading the Timberwolves with 21. Powell Gasol is leading the Spurs in rebounds. That's an old guy right there. He's got eight rebounds a game. Towns is leading with 11. Jeff Teague's uh, leading. Wow, Paul Gasol. Before I even talk about Jeff Teague, Paul Gasol is leading the Spurs in assists with 3.8. That's not too good, actually. But Jeff Teague is leading the Timberwolves in assists with 7.5. So we'll see how that one goes um, goes down. But I got the Spurs in that one. Raptors are heading into New Orleans to face off with the Pelicans. I got the Pelicans in that one. DeMarcus Cousins and Anthony Davis are going to feast in that game. Uh, I think they're both going to at least score um, 25 points each in this game. I'm going to go for a big game from both of them. So, yeah, I got New Orleans in this one. Chicago's heading into OKC. OKC is going to win that one easily, I think. Actually, you can't even say easily because you know Carmelo Anthony and Paul George and Russell Westbrook, they're all due for about maybe six bad shots a game. So we're going to see how that all plays out. Oklahoma City's been really disappointing so far this season. Uh, they just, yeah, like I said, they're 6-7. and seven. They don't score at all really well. And they play good defense, but like I said, they just take too many bad shots. The rookie, Laurie Markkinen for Chicago, he's leading them in points with 14.5. Paul George is leading the Thunder with 22 points. Uh, Markkinen's also leading the Chicago Bulls in rebounds with almost 8 rebounds a game. Russell Westbrook's leading the Timber or Thunder in rebounds. And then Jerry and Grant is leading uh, the Chicago Bulls in assists with 6. And of course, Russell Westbrook's almost got 10, so he's leading them with those. Um, Orlando's hitting into Portland. I th- I'm gonna pick. Um, I'm gonna pick Orlando on that one. The Trailblazers are favored, but I think the Magic are the better team, and they're gonna pull it out. They got the all-around better team, so we're gonna see if McCollum and Lillard can lead the Trailblazers and pick it up. But I doubt it. And then game of the night, Philadelphia is heading into LA. They're gonna face off with uh, the Lakers. I'm definitely gonna be watching that one. I suggest you do too. That's gonna be on at 7:30 Pacific time, 10:30 Eastern. I feel bad for those people that leave on the East Coast. I mean, imagine having to wait and watch a, watch a game at 10.30 at night. I'm usually in bed by around 10.30, 11. So uh, I'm lucky to live on the West Coast. So, But yeah, I'm going to go with the uh, 76ers in that one. Ben Simmons and Joel Embiid is going to be too much for that team. We're going to see if Lonzo Ball can pick it up against the 76ers, see if he can shoot the ball well. 
I feel like uh, Lonzo Ball, he needs to stop taking uh, outside shots. And in order for him to build up his confidence, I think he needs to be aggressive and start driving in. If he can get to the rim a lot better he's gonna and start um, getting those layups, he's going to start building up that confidence. And that's when you start branching out, moving back, taking your shots. Because when you got confidence, you can pretty much do whatever you want. So we'll see how Lonzo plays. But uh, Kyle Kuzma is going to be an interesting player to see in that one. I think uh, he'll probably be going up against Ben Simmons. Or actually, you might see Brandon Ingram guarding Ben Simmons. So that's going to be a fun matchup. Right now, Ben or Joel Embiid is leading the 76ers in points per game with 20. Jordan Clarkson is leading the Lakers with 15. Joel Embiid is also leading them in rebounds with 10. Almost 11 rebounds, actually. He's got 10.8. Julius Randle is leading the Lakers with 6.8 rebounds. Free Julius Randle. I want to see him play a lot more. And then Ben Simmons, of course, is leading the Sixers with 7.5 assists. And Lonzo Ball is leading the Lakers with 7. Did I say Sixers for Ben Simmons? Yeah, well, Ben Simmons, let me correct myself if I didn't. If I did, I'm just going to reiterate what I just said. Ben Simmons is leading the 76ers with 7.5 assists. And once again, Lonzo Ball leading the Lakers with 7. So that's going to be a fun game to watch. Right now, the Lakers are 6-8. and eight. Uh, Philly is 7-6. and six, So... Yeah, it's going to be probably the best game of the night. So watch that one. That's the one I'm going to be watching. But uh, that's going to wrap it up for today's show. It was a fun one. I'm glad I got to rant a little bit about the AFC East. That was fun. Uh, this segment was fun to do too. I always love the last one because I pretty much get to talk about whatever I want. But uh, yeah, that's going to wrap it up for today's show. We'll be back tomorrow. And uh, yeah, that's going to be it. So this was the GSMC Sports Podcast. Once again, I'm your host, Jesse Tapia. And we'll talk to you tomorrow. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Sports Podcast, part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network from movies to music from sports to entertainment and even weird news you can also follow us on twitter and on facebook thank you and we hope you have enjoyed today's program